you have a disability and assistive tech solutions for that are either unavailable in your country or extremely expensive. Or they come in a terrible hospital light green. The team of carables.org has been tackling this problem since three years and today they will present an insight into their journey. We are really happy to have Aprika here today who will give you an overview over their journey, their actions, their key moments and how they were able to help people. We are really glad to have you here today. Thank you so much. And it's so exciting to be here on the stage. And I'm presenting today uh, Caravels, um Open Source Hardware for Care. We um, went on a journey three years ago um, to explore how to co-create open hardware for care, to create an open hardware platform, and to bring um, different people together to create um, these solutions together. And first, I want to say quickly what a Carable is. Um, and um, thankfully, uh, most uh, has already been said. So it's co-created uh, with those people who need it. So if you're a person with disability or with a, a person uh, with a temporary or chronic illness, um, you have specific needs and you are the expert about your uh, needs. So um, makers, designers, people in healthcare create together then it's replicable and adaptable for the individual need in a local hacker space or in a local maker space of Help Lab. And lastly, and most importantly, I think as well, uh, it's open and documented. So we have an open platform where you can upload and download um, open hardware designs, get inspired, and where you can see um, which solutions there are that might fit your needs. And why do we need this? Because the solutions sometimes don't exist, because they're very often super expensive, and often also, unfortunately, uh, stigmatizing or just wrongly designed and not so beautiful like we would want them to be. Um, I'm standing here on the stage, but I'm representing a global community of people who are creating these carables. Um, here you see um, the members of the Global Innovation Gathering, an association registered in Berlin, but spread across the whole world, a little bit maybe comparable to a Chaos Computer Club Airfast, uh, like a knowledge exchange um, group that comes together. And where you see people um, who are in Basra, in Iraq, have very similar problems to people who are in South Sudan, for example, and creating a hackerspace there. Or if you are in Nairobi, um, you have um, yeah, things to discuss with people who are in Brazil, in Olinda, for example. So that's uh, how we come together. And that's also a tiny map of where Caribou's activities already started to be uh, taking shape and where like now in the stage of opening up to everybody um, who wants to become part of that. And I want to give you a little bit of an insight into, um, into the different projects we are creating and in the different, in the different um, yeah, products created and the different events created and because I'm only standing here for such a huge uh, number of amazing people uh, and their communities. Um, I bring mostly uh, videos they send to us uh, from their events. And I'm starting um, with a very inspiring video from Berlin that had world premiere <laughs> last year at the Congress, so I'm happy uh, to now show it in an even better version. Um, and I will start it now. So you see the Open Health Academy and what happens there. Was ich hier super cool finde, ist, dass es nicht profit, sondern wertorientiert ist und man tatsächlich einfach das Leben von Menschen verbessern kann. Wir entwickeln ein kleines Team, Hilfsmittel und Lifehacks, die das Leben wirklich einfacher machen. Von der Idee bis zum funktionierenden Prototyp. Das war Schottet Kados. Wenn Sie mal gefällt jetzt Fahrrad. Und macht Spaß, wenn? Ja, ich bin Karl. 
was auch Spaß macht? Unsere Lösung, mit der jeder Rolli zum E-Roller-Rolli wird. Du musst es einfacher machen. Und wenn es dann funktioniert, machen wir es für alle zugänglich. Nachbaubar. Open Source für, für alle. alle. Außergewöhnlich, oder? Zusammen mit Jonas, Asti, Rike, Tobi, Adina, Chong, Robert, Maike, Mervin, Anastasia, Flo, Daniel, Dean, Sven, Maggie, Lena, Thomas, Paddy, Bea, Ian, Isa, Paul. Und in diesen Werkstätten und Fab Labs kann wirklich jede Idee zur Realität werden. Hier ist viel Platz für außergewöhnliche Innovationen. Neben Workshops und Vorträgen kann man ja auch einfach richtig geile Sachen ausprobieren, wie ein 3D-Drucker oder Löten oder so. Cool. Es macht total Sinn, ein Produkt zu entwickeln mit der Person, die es auch benötigt. Endlich mal ein Projekt, wo du nicht überlegst, irgendwie, was soll das Ganze eigentlich, sondern einfach Sachen machen. Du hast keine Lust, Ideen für die Schublade zu entwickeln? Dann mach doch bei uns mit. Ich finde die Open Health Academy deswegen so großartig, weil sie zeigt, wie lame die Industrie ist. Es kann doch eigentlich nicht sein, dass äh, Hobby-Produktentwickler sich bessere Ideen überlegen, als das, was ich in jedem Sanitätshaus finde. Yeah, so you see, all the solutions created here had the beginning in the need of the person who wanted to have it, like Sven, who wanted to ride a bicycle but couldn't. Um, so that's uh, at core of everything we try to do. And as everybody knows, <laughs> during the COVID pandemic, um, we had lots of people um, all over the world um, creating um, protective equipment, um, personal protective equipment, also here in Berlin, um, but also all around the world. And here I bring an example from Kumasi Hive in Ghana, um, where the makers in the makerspace also created uh, lots of uh, face shields, for example. Um, and we still were thinking uh, that face shields were super important um, for protection um, and also, of course, for a medical field. So in Kumasi Hive, um, they were already connecting uh, to local um, hospital for dis people with disability and also with uh, engineering students and worked with lots of people in these regards but also had to um, see that they can't access the makerspace. So there were only always a few people allowed to enter the makerspace, but still they uh, created uh, lots and lots of these PPEs and these face shields and other uh, helpful uh, equipment. And they also um, were part of the Carabal. It speaks to empower people living with disabilities by removing the barrier of the lack of assistive devices. The project is in two phases, training and co-creation, which culminates in a hackathon and pitching summit, manufacturing and incubation. Trainees for the program have been selected. They have been taken through intensive and interactive training sessions on product design, 3D modeling and fabrication, and material selection. This training is done in person and virtually. A virtual challenge to engage and evaluate the skills of trainees in 3D modeling and fabrication. And material selection has been launched and trainees are working on mini projects in teams. Teams will develop a universal doorknob lever that easily converts a standard doorknob into a lever handle. People with difficulty gripping a standard doorknob should find this adapted lever handle an easy way to open a door. The handle should be ideal for anyone who has weak hands osteoporosis or arthritis. Designs by each team will be shared on all our social media platforms for our online community both for the best. In Nepal, in, gibt es ein, uh, oh, we're in English today. Um, in Nepal, the Communitaire Nepal created um, also programs um, that co-created through Carables and that worked together with students mostly to work on these kinds of uh, new designs, but also reproducing um, designs that were already published on the platform and on the internet generally. And they have um, opening, uh, they are 
opening uh, very soon, the very first Fab Lab in Nepal. So for them it was also a really good um, case to show the community around their region um, that a Fab Lab and the tools and the machines and uh, just creating things personally um, can help a lot uh, in the local community. And it's not only about, um, yeah, learning, but also creating something in the end. There were lots of um, iterations, of course, um, and in the end um, they published this um, as open knowledge again for everybody. And also, for example, worked together with the local um, hospital for people with disabilities, um, where uh, Pala from Nepal Communitaire could help the local uh, engineers to um, work together in the hospital to fix their 3D printers, for example, and this is Palab, and um, to fix um, the 3D printers and to work together to um, create designs they needed um, in this hospital. Now we also see um, what they did during the Humanitarian Design Challenge. And we will also, of course, um, publish the videos so you can revisit them and see um, what you can take from it, for example. Some of you also might have heard about um, Field Ready, which is an organization that creates um, these kind of um, capacity building workshops, but also was known um, like from the beginning on for 3D printing and humanitarian aid, so creating um, on the spot um, things that are needed, and also to collaborate um, a lot with um, NGOs on the ground in the certain humanitarian situation. publish the, the blueprints for that, so that you can say uh, the ideation, the empathy, um, the prototyping, I don't have so much ideas about that, um, can you help me? And you can read these um, uh, introductions and then also try it out yourself in your hackerspace. This was Nepal, which was very exciting. Next is Casa Criatura Lab in Olinda in Brazil. And they've also been working a lot in the COVID response. No viés ecológico, materno, feminino. Quando chegou o momento da pandemia, a gente começou a pensar novas soluções para continuar o nosso trabalho, ao mesmo tempo não oferecer mais riscos e a obedecer às determinações, né? Isolamento e de distanciamento social. O material, ele primeiramente é destinado todo bruto para a casa criatura, aonde lá tem a base das máquinas de corte a laser. Esse corte é feito por uma equipe, que no caso é o coletivo 3D. A gente, é, eu pego, recebo esse material e faço a esterilização dele. A montagem ela é, foi sendo desenvolvida, foram sendo desenvolvidos vários modelos. 
Então, no início, tinha outros processos de, de colagem, de peças, e a gente foi melhorando cada vez mais, mais simples, mais confortável. Então, a montagem dele é, é feita rapidamente e a gente consegue ter uma, uma boa produção para dar realmente vazão a essa, essa grande demanda que a sociedade está tendo. É, o foco é que realmente a gente consiga atender mais as, as populações mais necessitadas. Ou seja, a nossa intenção é sempre baratear realmente esse custo para que ele possa ser acessível e que possa realmente é, servir como uma solução para o dia a dia das pessoas. Uma grande revolução, né? Porque se antes a gente ficava muito à mercê das tecnologias estarem concentradas realmente nas grandes indústrias, nas empresas, quando isso chega ao acesso né, das pessoas que se interessam por tecnologia, que podem, inclusive, pegar uma tecnologia que já está desenvolvida e desenvolver sua própria, seu próprio protótipo em cima daquilo que já está ali, isso é uma coisa muito, realmente, revolucionária. Aquelas pessoas que precisam, realmente, estar tá na rua trabalhando, que não têm essa opção de estar tá em casa se resguardando, então são essas pessoas que a gente visa atender para que... É fortaleça realmente essa base da sociedade que, que precisa de uma atenção especial. So this is the last one and it's something for all the 3D printing nerds among us. Milan, um, as you know, um, in the beginning of the pandemic, there was yeah a huge hit. Um, they were well, yeah very struck, um, and so they were um, mass producing also um, these valves. And you can see this tiny hack of uh, pushing them down, which is super cute. <laughs> Such a nice idea. <laughs> So this was our very small world tour of um, places um, that contributed um, a lot to Carabels. There's many, many more uh, to show, of course, but we tried to limit ourselves a little bit. We created an exhibition that you can exhibit in your makerspace or in your hackerspace. Um, we created much more material, of course, um, that you can um, use uh, and it's just so nice again <laughs> yeah so they also mass produced uh, so much <laughs> as you see now in the box <laughs> and also worked together of course with hospitals and with other people who really used um, and needed these materials like um, many others did so If you want, you can become part of the Caribos community. You can send us an email, connect on Twitter, um, connect uh, on the website, of course, um, check out the resources we publish, and also just yeah, explore what's on there. And if you have any questions um, or any um, comments, please let us know. And if you want to join, please also let us know. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for the talk. Oh, and um, of course, <laughs> we're supported <laughs> gladly by the European Union. If anybody wants to have, <laughs> um, yeah, the European Union is supporting lots of different innovation programs and also this one. So thanks a lot for that. <laughs> cool. So far, we haven't gotten any questions from the internet. If you are watching this and right now you think of a question, please ask it. Um, over the usual channels. Um, and in the meantime, I thought of uh, maybe, maybe it's interesting for, for more people, H how did that get started? So uh, is it traceable to, to a circle of people who sat around a table and were like, yes, this is what we need to do, there's this problem and it needs to be tackled? Yeah, there's assistive tech communities all around the world um, working, for example, in humanitarian aid um, or in humanitarian collaboration where you see Field Ready is working for a long time already, CADOS is working for a long time already um, in this field of um, creating your own 
um, solutions for medical purposes, for example. Then there's uh, assistive tech communities um, from people with disabilities, for example, just creating their own um, uh, tools that they need, um, for example, I don't know, enhancements for your wheelchair or other things. And then um, there was a group um, from the um, Bach Society in Amsterdam uh, meeting uh, Geraldine, one of the founders of the Global Innovation Gathering uh, in Brazil, uh, in Olinda, I think, or in Rio, um, at a really amazing event. And they spoke about um, what can you do, and there's this uh, grant opening um, from the European Union where you can apply for with like 50 pages or 70 pages of um, proposal. And uh, we were al always in contact also with the Fab Lab in Berlin and with lots of people um, from the hacker community, of course, and found um, people in um, Milan who were closely related um, with a uh, center for the rehabilitation for children with disability, mainly neurological diseases, and they had such yeah, beautiful um, products as well um, that you could just uh, reproduce for other children. And so they all br came together and thought, yeah, we can create that proposal, we can create that platform. Because back uh, four or five years ago, there wasn't so many uh, open hardware platforms yet uh, where you could really dedicate it, find um, assistive tech solutions. But you would have um, all these general platforms, you all know, uh, where you find door handles, but also small chips and <laughs> anything else that you could possibly uh, 3D print. And so um, the idea to have this platform dedicated for medical and for um, yeah, assistive tech use um, was born uh, to have a place to collect this all and to um, have a place that is maybe also more accessible for people, that is more um, accessible, for example, also for people in the medical field who maybe don't want to scroll through all the chips <laughs> and all the other tiny gadgets you can print. So that was the idea. And then we won the grant and we could start it. And now um, the grant period is over. And now we um, expand it to um, yeah, whoever wants to contribute. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for the insight, for the explanation. Um, maybe as a last thing, I think no questions so far. Um, could you give us some outlook? So something, if everything goes great, what has happened in five years, or what, where do you aim to get? Um, everybody knows how to create um, their own um, assistive tech, and it's empowered to do so. For example, through. Um, online course and how to create designs uh, in the CAD programs, for example. Um, people in the medical field um, are knowledgeable about what is possible, and for example, people in the um, physical um, therapy, um, or like in, this, in these areas, uh, know about what's possible technically and are connected. And of course, everybody is just putting everything on the Caribos platform, but I mean, there are more open hardware platforms out there now, which is great. Um, and so we're more collecting also. And yeah, open, open source hardware is advanced. So um, like right to repair, um, super important um, aspect um, that you're the owner uh, of your own devices. Um, I don't know if, Many people know it, but um, if you're a person with, in a wheelchair, for example, you're not the owner of your wheelchair, but your health insurance is. And so all these, there's so many problems in this field. Uh, we're trying to tackle a tiny bit of it. Um, and we hope that yeah, more people feel inspired and uh, empowered to um, work in the field. And we're also um, having a talk tomorrow in the main program. <laughs> <laughs> which is super exciting uh, as well um, to reflect a bit on the last three years uh, as well and to give an outlook of what's coming uh, in the next, next step. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for all the explanations. That sounds like a very good future. Uh, we will continue at 7 o'clock with the next talk until we have, then we have a dinner break. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Bye.